If you have ever duplicated a project folder to create or to test out something different for your app, you're already using a form of version control. However, it is definitely not efficient and is fraught with potential problems. You've probably heard of Git and dismissed it as something for teams of developers working for a software company. You couldn't be more wrong. By far the most widely used modern version control system in the world today is Git. A staggering number of software projects rely on Git for version control, including commercial projects as well as open source. Developers who have worked with Git are well represented in the pool of available software development talent and it works well on a wide range of operating systems and IDEs. One of those IDEs is Xcode. It's built in. It doesn't matter where you are in your software development career. If you're just starting out using Xcode to learn how to code, you need to develop good habits of version control. My objective in this six-part series of videos is to introduce you to Git and how to effectively use it on a daily basis for personal use. If you do a Google search on Git, you'll be presented with a lot of command line commands using Terminal. For the most part, I'm going to avoid that and show you how you can use Xcode for simple yet effective version control using Git. I have to emphasize that this is not a course on Git, and some hardcore developers may scoff at my presentation, but my objective is to get you started with version control in the simplest and easiest way using the tool that you use every day. We won't be covering forking or pull requests. This is all about getting to know and understand how to use Git in Xcode for personal projects. You can work along with me to set up a Git repository, make commits and updates, revert to previous versions, and we'll keep the coding down to a minimum so that you can focus on the Git topics that we're covering. We will look at branching to create a development version of your project while maintaining your release version. We'll merge our development branch back to our master when we want to submit a new version to the App Store. In addition, we'll also look at creating remote repositories on GitHub so you can have an external backup, all for free. We will also explore how you can ignore certain files that do not need to be committed to your local or remote repository. And finally, we'll take a look at GitHub's GitHub desktop application and how you can use it to monitor and update not only your own projects, but also other open source projects you might find on GitHub. If this is something that you think you could use, then check the playlist and get started with the next video in the series. Make sure you follow along in sequence, as one video builds on the previous one.